All right, now we're going to begin getting into fractions, and we're going to do this slowly. We're going to start off with the very, very basics and then move our way up gradually. We're really going to pay attention to terminology, and each step of the way, I want you to be practicing, practicing, practicing on everything that we talk about and do. It is absolutely crucial that you be good at fractions, and fractions are probably the one thing that most students hate the very most. So we have to learn to make peace with them because we will be using them from now on. All right, so let's look to start out with, oops, I always go too far down, don't I? Okay, let's start out with this figure that we have a drawing of here. We see that we have a rectangle, and this rectangle has been divided into five parts, five equal parts. How many of those parts have been shaded? Well, it looks like three out of the five have been shaded. So let's put three out of five. When we write that as a fraction, because a fraction is just telling you a portion or a part of a whole amount, we would write that as a fraction as 3 over 5. Now we could also talk about the portion that is not shaded. So if we looked at the portion that is not shaded, that would be 2 out of the 5 parts. Do you notice that these, the 2 out of the 5 and the 3 out of the 5, when we put those together, we have all 5 of the pieces. We'll kind of keep that in mind as we go through these fractions, and that will start um, to play a part here soon. All right, let's look at another um, figure. Here we have the same five, um, rect the rectangle divided into five equal parts, but this time every single one of them has been shaded. So if we say how many parts are shaded, that would be 5 out of 5. When I write that as a fraction, we would write it as 5 shaded parts out of 5 total parts. Now, do you remember when we were working on division and we said that a fraction is just a, a kind of a compact way of writing a division problem? If I were going to take this exact notation and rewrite it as division, we would take the top number, that would be the dividend, divided by the divisor. And what is 5 divided by 5? Well, that's 1. So 5 out of 5 parts is 1 whole. That will be very interesting as we go forward in fractions also. Okay, so we've kind of looked at these fractions as, you know, the just kind of getting very basically started. When you look at a fraction, the bottom number always tells you how many pieces the entire shape or number, whatever, is divided into. So notice that back here on ours, we had, uh, this was divided into five equal parts. So our bottom number in our fraction was five. Same thing with this example. It was divided into five equal parts, so the bottom number of our fractions was five. Okay, the top number tells you how many of those pieces that you have, or, you know, what portion you're talking about. So if we keep that in mind, how would we represent the number one-fourth? So remember, the bottom number tells you how many pieces the entire shape or number is divided into. So I would have to, first of all, divide my shape into four equal parts. So here I would have one, two, three, four equal parts. The top number tells us how many of those, or what proportion we're looking at, what section. So we want one section out of four. So if I shade in one section, that is a physical representation of one-fourth. 